Welcome to Inquisitive, the show in which we learn issues on how to make the best out of our technology. In this sixth episode of an eight-part series dubbed the 360 Tech Leadership Series, we have General Robert Kiboshi, uh, who is the Kenya's Chief of Defense Forces. Welcome, sir. Thank you. In recent years, the emergence of innovation and cyber tactics and globalization uh, of enemy formations uh, has transformed the place of signal, signals cause globally. They have been launched from just being uh, su supporting uh, services to being the actual arrowhead. What, uh, what, as the world and, uh, and our economy shifts to more reliance on technology, how is it likely to affect military uh, modern warfare priorities and your capabilities and the way you approach warfare? Thank you. I think uh, uh, you are absolutely right that um, globalization, uh, technological evolution has had uh, a major uh, input in changing the way we do things. And the military uh, world over, uh, and the KDF in particular, uh, has also uh, been influencing uh, the, the, the dynamics of technology. One of the key uh, aspects is that um, because information, uh, particularly information uh, technology, has become one of the key drivers uh, and the most uh, evolving uh, part of technology, we in the military uh, must learn a lot of a lot of issues first of all uh, in terms of communications uh, and information systems how do we secure our systems uh, we uh, used to have uh, the advantage of having uh, ciphering machines uh, cryptography uh, we use a lot of uh, communications from, from radios, which are based on voice. How do you secure those? How do you ensure uh, that a soldier operating in Somalia and using a cell phone, the information that he communicates does not end up uh, with the wrong person? So. We therefore have to invest uh, in, uh, in securing our systems. Uh, and, and, and this is critically important. Uh, ensuring that we have now more reliance on data than voice. Uh, and that requires that you have a holistic transformation of the communication and information uh, architecture. Uh, and that has to be done, uh, and we are very fortunate, uh, for example, uh, in the Kenya Defense Forces, because of the government's initiative. For example, the, uh, the NOFB project, uh, the National uh, Fiber uh, Optic Backbone uh, Infrastructure uh, that, is, uh, that is being rolled out by the government, has terminated in all our military bases. What that means is that we have now the capacity to, uh, to transmit data uh, on a secure uh, medium uh, over this national fiber optic uh, capability. But then also, we require to be able to not only do that, but also uh, get ourselves uh, uh, communicating with those operating out of the areas that this fiber uh, is not operating. So there will be a lot, a, lot of, a lot of transformational issues related to how we structure uh, our uh, communications and information systems uh, to ensure that we remain, as I said, ahead of the curve, uh, which I think is very important. Probably it is one of the most uh, transformed uh, units. Uh, so what, what, if you say when you joined 1979, mm -hmm. What would you describe as having been the role then and the role today of the signals function and how have you kept in touch with that core 
although now of course you have a an overall responsibility how well have you kept in touch with that core and and what has it been like for you seeing it transform uh, to what it is today I, I, I think there's a lot that has changed and as I said uh, when we started off um, in 1979 uh, when I joined uh, I don't know whether you recall the Morse code uh, we used to you have used the Morse code. You was there. You used it in movies. We used to use Morse code, uh, particularly one to avoid bad weather, uh, or sometimes to use it uh, uh, to secure our communication because you're using a code that probably the enemy doesn't know. But that that has changed over time. Uh, that has changed over time, and uh, uh, we ended up now uh, using the Morse code less, but also bringing in equipment that have the capacity uh, to. Uh, to frequency hop. I, I don't know whether you, you've heard of something called frequency hopping. Mm -hmm. A radio that hops over a certain yes, band of frequencies yes. and therefore you can't catch up with it. Yes. Uh, and, and, and that, particularly because electronic warfare has become a major aspect uh, in terms of uh, blinding uh, the commanders. If you, if, you, if you blind the communication systems, if you jam the communication systems, you blind the commanders. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't control their forces. So it is the responsibility of the signal officer uh, to ensure that the communication he provides to the commanders, one, cannot be intercepted by the bad guys, and secondly, cannot be interfered with, either through jamming. So technology then, and is available, uh, is to ensure that we apply a new technology. And yes, we have. Uh, I'm glad to say that uh, we have kept pace with that to ensure that we have communication systems that are able to provide secure communication and also to avoid uh, the interference by the bad guys. Okay, so from most codes to signal hoping? From frequency voice, hoping, voice, data, data. data, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So in such uh, in such scenarios mm -hmm. where where there's a uh, concurrent uh, evolution of technology within the civilian sector, mm -hmm. as it is uh, within the the military and uh, defense and security space, mm -hmm. what would you say as the chief of defense forces is the role of the civilian in in supporting defense efforts? Mm -hmm. Does the civilian have any role, and what could that role be, if any? Oh yes, uh, the civilians have a huge role. Uh, the civilians have a huge role to play uh, in supporting the defense efforts. Um, there are a number of areas I see, uh, and, 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 and we have started working uh, with the civilian organizations. For example, working with the universities uh, to uh, professionalize some of our activities. You will know, for example, that we have uh, a food processing factory uh, at Gilgil, where we, we dry vegetables uh, so that our soldiers uh, can have, you dry the vegetables, and when you cook the vegetables, they turn back into the original, uh, you know, uh, form uh, as they were. And, 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 and that has happened at uh, Gilgil because of cooperation that we've had with the university, uh, particularly the Egerton University. Uh, working together with them, uh, being an agricultural university, uh, to develop that capacity. We have had uh, also uh, a, a lot of engagements, uh, particularly uh, on the areas of technology uh, transfer. Uh, we look at the various capabilities available, for example, with the Kenya Airways, how do we use that uh, to be able to leverage on it uh, to help us uh, support our, our capabilities as well. How do we use, for example, young, brilliant uh, information technology uh, civilian actors to develop uh, software systems here? Uh, and we have a lot of young people today uh, who are working with our teams here uh, to develop uh, management information systems uh, within, uh, within the defense. So there's a huge linkage. Uh, we cannot be able to do this on our own. We need to be able to work with the, with the civilian organizations that have similar uh, capacities. Coordination sounds like something that it, is at the heart of your priorities. It is a critical, it's a critical requirement. 
is what we call civil military relations. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so we've come to the uh, to the end of that episode, and uh, so we look forward to episode seven, uh, where we'll be covering uh, military innovation and what are the transformation trends that we are seeing uh, within the that align with civilian uh, trends. Thank you very much. Thank you.